In this tutorial, we are going to be building the Slink3 clone using only Python and Pinecone. Pinecone is a powerful Python framework that allows us to build web applications using only Python. You won't have to write any HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. You simply write the elements and define what they should do in Python code. Pinecone will automatically translate this Python code into HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and React. To get started, we need to have Node.js and pip install Pinecone. Once that's done, we can create a default project by creating a folder and writing PC in it inside. PC is a terminal tool that comes with Pinecone. This will generate some template files and folders that we will explore further in our video. To run this web app, we write PC run. We can then access the website by going to this URL. And this is how the default website looks. Now let's explore the generated files and folders. We have an assets folder that should contain any assets that we have in our application. I'm going to paste in the images that we are going to use in this app here. The code for this website is located in a folder with the same name as the parent folder. In this Python file, we find the skeleton code for the application. We can delete this code and start building our own from scratch. Let's begin by adding an image using the PC image function. I will give it the image path and specify some formatting including width and height for size, border radius to make it circular, and margin bottom for separation from the next element. We can then center our elements by wrapping them in a pc.center function. Let's check the browser and see how it looks. Let's then add this colorful background. We can encapsulate everything in a pc.box function and specify the width and height. Then we can set the background to a linear gradient and give it the two main colors and the degree of which the two colors meet. Let's see how that looks. Next, we'll be adding the name. We can use the text function and give it any string and specify the formatting that we will need. We'll specify the font size, line height, font family, text align, the width of the element, text color, and padding. This font needs to be imported from Google Fonts and in order to do so, we can scroll down and paste the font URL in the style sheets parameter. Lastly, in order to vertically stack elements on top of each other, we use the pc.vstack function. We can set the spacing between the elements in the vstack to zero as we'll use margins and paddings to set our spacing. That looks good so far. Let's add the one line introduction next. We'll use the same text function as before and set the appropriate formatting parameters. Up next is going to be those buttons. It consists of an image and a text that are horizontally stacked. Then we have a white background with a rounded border and a shadow. We also have a hover effect that moves the button a little. Let's add a new vStack function for the lower part of the page and vertically stack the vStack functions on top of each other. We can set the spacing for the lower vStack function as we will have more consistent spacing between the elements here. For the button, we can horizontally stack elements by using the hStack function. Then we can add the image by using the pc.image function and specify the image path and width. Then I can add the button text and specify the formatting that we want. Let's then add the formatting of the button itself. I will add some padding and specify the width and height. Then I can specify the border as one pixel solid and then give it a color. I can also make the border rounded by specifying the border radius. Then I will set the background to white with the BG parameter. Let's also add the shadow. That looks pretty close to the end result. We are just missing the hover effect. We can specify that with the underscore hover parameter. This parameter takes in a dictionary. I will set the cursor to a pointer so that we can have the cursor change when we hover to indicate it's clickable. We can set the movement by specifying the translate parameter and telling it to move 4 pixels down and to the right. Also, if you notice, the shadow stayed in place. We can do that by decreasing the drop from 8 pixels to 4 pixels. Finally, we want the button to actually take us somewhere when clicked. So we can do that by using the PC link function and give it the href. 
we can also tell it to do nothing on hover since we already specified that on the htag function. That looks fantastic. We can also move the button stuff to an external function and call it getButton. This function will take in the button text, image source, and href URL. Then we can call the button four different times with different parameters to create four buttons. And this is how it looks. Up next is going to be those social media buttons. We can see that they are horizontally stacked, so we can call the htag function and specify the spacing. Then we just call the image function and specify the image path and width. And also, let's set the hover parameter. We will change the cursor to a pointer and scale the image by 1.1. We can also make it a link by encapsulating it in a PC link function and specifying the URL. Here is how it looks. We can also put this in a function where the inputs are going to be the image path and the href URL. Then we can call the function three times for each of the social media icons we have. And there you have it. This is a complete link tree clone using Pinecone. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.